The folks at Critical Role have dropped their 5th edition supplement, Tadori Reborn, offering new player options just in time for the call of the Netherdeep Adventure Book. In this video, I'll be using one of the player options from Tadori Reborn, so you can play a character that draws their power from the corrupted forces of nature, and join others in answering the call of the Netherdeep. Hey everyone, welcome to Dungeoneer's Pack. This is Josh, and thank you for watching. Before jumping into the build, here are some things to keep in mind. I'm going to focus on levels 1 to 10 as most campaigns are played in this level range, and builds on this channel are built with a focus on the concept, but also will be viable for combat and roleplay. There are two goals for this build. The first is that this build will be inspired by the lore of the Exandria setting and use a player option from the Tadori Reborn 5th edition supplement to fit you right into the world. For those looking to use official 5th edition content, I have a suggestion for you later in the video. The next goal is to focus on our ability to control large areas on the battlefield, making it difficult for our enemies to gain a stable position. For our ability scores, prioritize wisdom to support our class features. This character relies on the perceptiveness and instinct to survive. Follow that up with dexterity to boost our initiative and armor class. Our character is going to be nimble. Then choose constitution for a healthy amount of hit points. Next is charisma as this character is going to have a quirky but engaging personality, followed by intelligence and strength is our dump stat. When looking for a race option, I was looking for a race that was a little off the beaten path and it just so happened, goblins fit the bill. As a goblin, this character will be an exiled member of the Vine Wreath Enclave, located in the thorn infested lush gut forest on the western coast of Wildmount. I went with the goblin option found in Monsters of the Multiverse, which will allow us to place a plus two in a one ability score and a plus one in another. We also get Dark Vision, which is a standard with all goblinoids because who needs a light? The most notable change with the new goblin is Fate Ancestry, which will protect us from being charmed, and we still have Nimble Escape to use our bonus action from time to time to get out of melee range, and Fury of the Small to add a small bit of damage to our attacks. To kickstart this character on the path of adventure, this goblin lives in exile. They answer the call to be seen as a hero so they can be accepted back into their clan. The Hermit background is perfect for this. Hermit gives us proficiency with medicine, religion, an herbalism kit, and a language of our choice. Medicine will improve our our ability to help stabilize fallen teammates without magic. Religion is our understanding of faith surrounding the Wild Mother and other gods in the setting. Jumping into the level breakdown, starting at level 1 to harness the power of nature, we are going to dive into the Druid class. Alongside our class proficiencies, we can speak Druidic and cast spells. Druidic could be a combination of the goblinoid language and a language tied to those devoted to Melora. With spellcasting, we pick up cantrips and first level spells. Consider Druidcraft or Mold Earth for some utility options. Both signify our ability to manipulate nature in some way. Infestation as our go-to damage cantrip to tie us back to the lush gut forest and our goblin nature. We befriend bugs to help attack our enemies. For first level spells consider create and destroy water and good berry as survivalist spells to get us through our adventure. Entangle and fairy fire are great support options in combat. Entangle is us calling upon barbed vines and roots reminiscent of the lush gut forest while fairy fire could be us summoning fireflies to light up the area. And finally healing word is our go-to spot healing option. With level 2 we gain Wild Shape, which will be primarily used out of combat as a utility option to help with dungeoneering. Also at this level we can choose our subclass and we are going with the Circle of Blighted from Tal'Dorei Reborn. This subclass will have us draw power from the Wild Mother's Wrath and Pain that warped the Lush Gut Forest after her battle with the Betrayer God known as the Cloak Serpent. Defiled Ground allows us to corrupt a piece of land or water in a 10 foot radius to cause harm to our enemies. Any hostile creature that stands in the Defiled Ground takes an extra 1d4 necrotic damage the first time they take damage from an attack or spell on the round. Blighted Shape covers our Wild Shape form with Bramble and Thorns while also granting some additional bonuses. While in our Wild Shape form we add 2 to our Armor class, gain Dark Vision if the form doesn't have it, and if it does, it increases the field of Dark Vision by an additional 60 feet. At level 3 we gain access to second level spells and here are my suggestions. Bark Skin as a way to bring the Blighted appearance from your Wild Shape form to your normal one, which will also increase your base armor class if it's not good enough. Heat Metal as a damage and control option to shut down the enemy. Old Person used in the form of Vines or Roots restraining a creature, Lesser Restoration, Pass Without Trace, Spike growth calling on the wrath of the wild mother to blanket the land and wither and bloom. Next at level 4 we have the option between an ability score increase or a feat and I went with the feat choosing chef to add a little bit of flair and utility to our character. You could tempt your party with food they find strange but is actually delicious. On a short rest we can make food for our allies and they regain an extra 1d8 hit points. During a long rest we can make some snacks that our allies can use their bonus action to eat and gain temporary hit points equal to our proficiency bonus. For level 5 we can start casting 3rd level spells and here are my recommendations. Aura of Vitality for an amazing Amazing healing option, conjure animals with the potential to summon a ton of little critters with your DM's approval. This spell will pair nicely with another subclass feature we receive later. I will get to that in a bit. Dispel magic, erupting earth, revivify, and speak with plants. With level 6 we can summon a corrupted plant creature off the pain of our enemies with the call of the shadow seeds feature. Anytime a creature takes damage while standing in our defiled ground, we can use a reaction to summon a blighted sapling. On the following turns, we only 
only need to give our pet verbal commands in order for it to take an action. When we hit level 7, we can start casting 4th level spells and here are my recommendations. Blight as an offensive option drawn upon the corrupt and energy of our home. Divination as a way to speak and seek guidance from the wild mother. Freedom of movement. Giant insect to turn some of our bugs into giant beasts to help us in combat. Grasping vine and stone shape. At level 8, we can take on better forms with the wild shape improvement and we have the option between choosing another ability score increase or a feat and I went with the ability score increase choosing wisdom to boost our spell attack and spell save DC. Hitting level 9, we can start casting 5th level spells and here are my recommendations. Greater Restoration, Insect Plague, Mass Cure Wounds, Reincarnate, Scrying, and Wrath of Nature. And finally, for level 10, any critter we summon is corrupted with Nature's Wrath with the Foul Conjurations feature. Any beast, fae, or plant we summon gains immunity to necrotic and poison damage, and when they die, they explode, dealing damage to any creature next to them if they fail a constitution saving throw. When paired with a Conjured Animal spell, and the DM allows us to summon a ton of small critters, we can turn them into little necrotic bombs to send at our enemies. Now for our pros and cons. For our pros, our spells are solid and controlling areas of the battlefield or shutting down a single enemy. There won't be any creature we can't pin down or take out of the fight. And for the times we can't, the fouled ground will provide a little extra boost and damage to one of our allies for an attack they make and let us summon a pet to help out in the fight also. Speaking of pets, in the later levels, we will be able to have a few extra bodies out in the field to pummel our enemies. Foul Conjuration turns the potential loss of our pets into a positive, dealing damage to our enemies when they go down. Call of the Shadow Seed will have us gain a pet without needing to expend a spell slot, so we will always have a companion at our side. Now for our cons. Druids have a ton of great spells, but unfortunately, they require concentration. We will only have one of these spells active at any time, so we need to make it count. In addition to this, we have no boost to maintaining our concentration. Positioning is key. Stay in the back line to survive. Our subclass features provide a broad boost to a variety of class features, but they don't have us truly excel at any particular role. It might offer too much flexibility compared to other subclasses, as they are a bit more focused on what they want to achieve in combat. If you like this character idea but don't have or want to use Tal'Dorei Reborn, use the Circle of Spores Druid instead. It hits the same corrupted nature story elements that the Circle of the Blighted Druid has, but with a little bit of a melee focus. With that said, I want to hear from you. What kind of Druid would you build to play in the critical role setting of Exandria? Let me know down in the comments section. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like and if you want to see more content like this go ahead and hit that subscribe button all right i'm out of here have a good one